Hey, this is Pete, the developer of Throne of Bone, a turn-based strategy game that puts you in charge of a team of undead minions, each willing to die defending the honest work of necromancy. Let's jump into some gameplay. You play as an undead necromancer, resurrected to reclaim your throne and kingdom through a series of auto-battled combats. In the combat phase, your minions trade blows with intruders until one side is defeated. Disposable troops is one of the many perks of being Necromancer. After each combat, spend your hard-earned skulls on new minions to bolster your forces. At its core, Throne of Bone is all about making smart drafting decisions, tactically arranging your team, and ultimately hoping your brainless undead can carry you to victory. There's tons of different creatures, from pumpkin-headed constructs, to friendly ghosts, to otherworldly beings beyond comprehension that strain your sanity, plunging your mind into unending darkness. I went with Gord Head. When you're new to the game, you can control the playback to see every step and trigger in combat. And if you're degenerate like me, you can set the playback to 5x to maximize the number of runs you can do in a day. Anyway, duplicate minions can be merged together. Fully level up a minion to earn a powerful augment. After clearing out this first area, you've earned enough experience to level up and learn a new spell. Song of Malice pumps minions if they survive attacking. It could go nicely with these ranged and shielded minions. Undying Dedication rewards you for having minions of the same subtype. But I'll take Corpse Control. It lets me control the minion directly for a bonus attack. After an area is reclaimed, you can choose a row or column of activities to do before the next chapter. At the forge, I'll sacrifice a heart to craft a new minion augment. Having our backline archer attack first seems like a pretty good upgrade. In the training room, I can spar against other necromantic lineups to earn minion progress. Let's use corpse control that newly augmented Deadeye Archer. Nothing personal, training dummy. Because I won, I can upgrade this Gord Head, doubling his ability and earning another augment. I want to keep the Gord Head alive for his aura, so this choice seems pretty good. My last activity is cracking open some coffins. Let's see what I find. Mercury. I'm not really going for a spellcaster build, but maybe I can put this to use. We've entered into a new area, so that means more lanes, new minions, and new enemies. This bony boy will pump neighboring related minions, which includes both my skeletons as well as the gourd head, since they're both shaman. I'll probably spend my last skulls on Sticky. He leaves behind a broken Sticky when he dies, so that's a nice way to double dip on the gourd head's aura. This area is currently occupied by the Insectomancer, so he'll be impacting each combat leading up to the boss fight. These two enemies are a pretty solid duo, but I think my souped-up archer is going to demolish them. The Insectomancer is kind of a jerk. Certain combinations of augments can form an alchemical aspect, giving minions an additional bonus, but I don't have enough for recipe yet. Minions can be recycled to recoup an additional skull. Dead flesh is compostable. 
Maybe that's what's going on in this art. Our team is looking pretty stacked. Let's skip ahead to this area's boss fight. Since throwing a bone is a roguelike, in every run the minions you see, the spells you learn, and even the bosses of each area are randomized. If we were facing off against the Phytomancer with her venomous plants, I may have gone a more magic damage approach, as a high stat comp like mine here gets punished by her deadly plants. However, it does excel at mopping up insects. Looks like the undead are the superior minions after all. After that fight, I try to take on my previous best run for the demo. If I beat it, this new roster will live on. This feature was originally designed for an arcade high score style experience for the Seattle Indies Expo, and it really highlights the unique potential of an auto-battling roguelike. The chance for your single player experience to blend into a social or competitive experience. I'm in the process of adapting it into a full feature for the final release of the game, but it already works for local saves. And it ended up being a really exciting experience for players at the expo, causing some to return to my booth to try and retake their lost title. Very fitting for Throne of Bone. like a tie. I want to thank you for making it this far. Throne of Bone is made by Windmill Slam, a solo indie developer working with some really talented artists, and I'm very excited for more to see the good that necromancy can do. Thank you.